Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture on Zotero. In this lecture, we are going to learn about the Zotero referencing management software and how it will help us in improving our citation practices and making our life easy through saving a lot of time when we're writing a thesis or a journal article or any kind of reports. So it is highly recommended that you use it for all kinds of scientific writing, not only when you are writing thesis or journal article. Feel free to use it for your assignments during a course or a report that you're writing for your company. So here we are on the Zotero website, zotero.org. And from here, you can download the Zotero software. So it's available for Mac, Windows, Linux, and iOS. And if I click here on download, here it will take you to this window where you can download for Windows. Here you have the options for Mac, Linux, Linux 64-bit, and so on. So just click here, download, follow the typical download process and installation process of a software. Plus, when you are done with downloading the software, also download the Chrome connector. So Zotero has connector for Firefox and Chrome. I'm using Chrome, so it is recommending me to install the Chrome connector. So it is recommended to use Chrome or Firefox when you are using Zotero, okay? So then just go ahead with this and install this. When we're done with these two installation, then you can open your Zotero and it would normally look like this, but it will be empty. In my case, you see I have some references here, but in your case, you will have everything empty. You will only have library, my publications, duplicate items, unfiled items, and trash, okay? But before going into detail, let me walk you through with the benefits of Zotero. I will present you about six benefits. So the first one is that it saves time significantly required for managing proper referencing practices. Secondly, it makes sure that everything you cited in the text appears in the reference list and vice versa, which is a, which is a must in scientific writing. It helps us to fetch PDF files automatically. When you import the reference information in your Zotero, there is a place where you can go and just click one button and it will fetch all the possible PDFs automatically that you have access to through your VPN provider, through your university. And it will build your scientific library, which you can use anytime later, okay? Particularly if you're working later on a specific topic and so on, it will help you a lot and save a lot of time from searching for new literature all the time, new references or old references all the time. And most importantly, it supports you in following proper referencing, which reduces the risk of plagiarism. So this is a very important point. It makes life easy to implement proper referencing practices and it will reduce the risk of plagiarism. And finally, Zotero is a free open access software and it will have access to the software lifetime. So now let's go back to the Zotero software again and we will see how we can use it when we are writing and we go through, when we're writing our thesis and journal articles. Here we are again on the Zotero website it is highly recommended that you register an account here. You can register an account for free. Okay, you put the email address, username, password, and then you create an account. So I already have an account. So I will walk you through how it looks like. So if I log into my Zotero account, this is how it looks like. You see everything I have on my Zotero software on my computer, I have the same things also on my online folder online web library. So here you see both my online library and my desktop library, the Zotero desktop library, they are synchronized. This will save a lot of time for you. And also by having this duplicate, you know, if you lose suddenly one of the softwares, if, if it's suddenly not working on the computer, you can come back to your web library and have the access from here immediately. So I highly recommend that you create an account, log in, and then you synchronize with your web library and your physical library and your uh, desktop library. You can use this web library as, uh, this web library is already actually usable. 
okay even if you don't have the desktop one you can already use the web one okay but now let's go through the desktop one first we will show how to synchronize the two libraries so for the synchronization purpose you have to come here on edit and here you have to come on preferences so under preferences you see this tab synchronization and here you put your username your password and then you simply click sync and okay so here you see you click you tick this sync automatically and sync full text content and click okay and that's how you link your web and desktop Zotero libraries. You see, in my case, it's already done. I can unlink the account, which I don't want to do, but in case I change my account or username, I can unlink it and connect it with a new one. Another thing you can do is you can change the language here. So if you come here on advanced, you see there are many languages that are supported. So you can change the language that you want for the software. Here on the side, you can see a lot of different formatting for referencing. So you see, normally we use the APA 7th edition. So you can use that one and set it as your default. But there are many other formats available for the uh, Elsevier, for IEEE Access, Chicago, Nature. Okay, you can also look for additional journal styles. So if you're writing for a particular journal, you can search with the name of the journal. They might have the template of that journal built in here and you can use it directly, okay? So if this is not relevant when we're writing a thesis, but when we're writing a journal article and trying to submit it to the journal, it's very important for us to follow the journal referencing format. For example, I know this journal OR, for OR, it's an operations research journal. And it's good to see that we have the format of this journal here, right? So there are many journals listed here. The best would be that you start your search from here. So now that we synced our libraries, now we can go for import of our reference information. There are several ways of doing it, okay? So first we will look into the easiest way of doing it. And then we will slowly go into a bit more advanced one. But one of the thing I recommend is that you create some subfolders here. Okay, for example, you see I have for this topic alternative fuel, I have a subfolder and then another one and for another one, okay? So to create a subfolder, you can just right click on the library and you can create a new collection. So for example, let's say I write here, research hub video. Of course, this is not a valid, uh, category, but actually maybe we can make it better. We can say e-learning. I can create a library for that. So my library is now empty. This group of library for e-learning is now empty, right? Let's see how we can actually export some reference from uh, Google Scholar or similar websites. I go to Google Scholar, okay? And here I simply write e-learning in higher education, let's say. Now that I want to cite this in this article. Okay, I want to extract the information and have it in my Zotero. So I can simply click here on site. I want to, let's say, use the APA format. So I select this one. And then you use this one, refman. So I click on refman. You see here it's saying saving to e-learning. So basically here, what we see, we see that we can save it in e-learning or we can see it in my library or I can go to more and I see all the options. So my library is like where we have all the references and here we have the sub groups of references. But I want to save it under e-learning. So I select this one and I say done. Let's say I want to cite another one. I want to cite this one. I can do the same thing again. Select this one, refman, and it is going to e-learning and I can just say done. If I just don't do anything, if I just like cite APA refman, and it is showing that it's going to e-learning and it's okay. I want it to e-learning, I don't want to change, then it's already done, I don't have to do anything. But let's say I find a lot of articles from here interesting and I want to cite multiple of them and extract their information. So after you install your Zotero, you will normally have the Zotero connector. In this case, the Zotero connector for Chrome, you will have this window, uh, this, this button here. Like in this case, it is showing as a folder button. If I click this one, it actually gives me 
the information about all the relevant articles in this page. So I can select all of them that I want. Okay, I can select all of them that I want and I say, okay. So their information is now extracted actually in my Zotero library, as you see under e-learning, I have now all of them. For some of them, it already even fetched the PDF, which it could access automatically. We can also open the PDF. So it's saying, okay, I fetched the PDF, do you want to open it? So it is doing kind of this PDF search automatically, as you can see, right? But I don't want to open it for now, but it is recommended you actually save all these PDFs in a folder dedicated for your article or research, because it, it's good to have it in Zotero, but it's also good to have a duplicate copy of all the relevant PDFs in your computer. For some of them, for example, this one, it could not find the PDF. So here you see that yeah, the PDF symbol is not there. So the, the ones it could find the PDF, we already see the PDF symbol here. But in any case, you know, if you don't see the PDFs, it could be often a good idea to select as many as you want. Okay, so let's say in this case, I select these two, okay? Or also this one, let's say I select these three. And then if I right click, I have this option here, find available PDFs. So this is a way to fetch all the PDFs of your imported reference list. So if I try this, it says no PDF found. So it's just that they are not available. But if they were available, if they were not fetching it automatically, this is how we could actually try to fetch them, okay? And let's say that you can't fetch it, but you have the PDF already. But when you are trying to fetch it from here, it cannot do it, okay? So if you, if you already have the PDF, in, you want to add it there. So you can just right click. And then here you can attach a URL with the reference, or you can also attach a stored copy of the file or attach link to a file, something like that. Okay, so this is how you can connect uh, your article link or your PDF article uh, from your computer and load it here, okay? Now let's look into another ways of adding reference here. That could be by using ISBN numbers of books or journal, DUI of journal articles. So let's say that e-learning in, let's say we, we write something else, blended learning in higher education. So I want to cite this one now. But let's say I can do it directly from here, but let's say somehow I am not in Google Scholar, but I found this article somewhere else and I have access to only the DOI. So I copy the DOI, okay? Then I come to my Zotero and I then click here on this tool, magic tool, okay? This is like a magic tool. I click here and here you see, we can enter ISBN, DOI, PMIDs, X archive IDs and lots of, yeah, different types of IDs. Um, these are the unique identifiers for journal articles or book chapters. So if I put my DOI and press enter, so you see it, it is fetching all the information for this one. So blended learning in higher education, you see we have all the information already available here, right? So we can see all the detailed information here of this article that it has already fetched. This is more than I think we need to present to follow proper referencing. But some cases it might happen that you don't have enough information here. So you might have to add a little bit here and there. You should maybe double check things. But in this case, it looks like we have everything, especially when you were using DOI or when you extract it from the Google Scholar, you will have all the relevant information. For general articles, sometimes when you are extracting from Google Scholar, maybe the page numbers are missing or page numbers are incorrect. So you can actually update the page number. Okay, so that's something you can still do. So for example, in this one, you see the page number is missing. It might be that it's a open access journal. And if that is the case, it will not have the page number. So let's say if I open the PDF and in the PDF, yeah, it's 440. We have a page number here. So it's 442. It's 442. If I go down, it's 442, 454. So we can actually update this here. 440 to 454, right? And it is now saved. Also, you see it already picked the PDF automatically, right? So that was very easy. So using this tool, we can fetch the reference information for 
ISBN, DOI, and some other unique identifiers. Now let's look into one last approach, which is the manual approach. So here, if we click on this one, new item, then we have some options. So what kind of item are we going to add? Is it a journal article, newspaper article, book section? Book section is normally used for book chapters, edited books. So books are two types. Normally books are written by one author. So those are authored books or multiple authors who wrote all the chapters, two, three authors. So those are also authored books. But sometimes it has become common in recent years that you know there are two, three editors who communicate with 10, 15 authors from different parts of the world in different topics. And then each of those authors, they write one, two chapters in the book. And then the editors, they review and improve the quality of these chapters. And then they also write a couple of chapters in the book and they provide an introduction which connects all these 10, 15 book chapters written by 10, 15 authors, right? So those are the edited books. So for the edited books, often we cite the book chapters instead of the whole book. So then you will use the book section. But for authored books, normally we select the book. And here you see the journal article and we also have some other uh, categories here. You see, you can cite more or less anything. You can cite video, you can cite email, you can cite blog post, artwork, interview, more or less anything you want, you can cite, okay? But normally these are the most common ones and in scientific writing, we normally use journal articles the most and then some book chapters and uh, book sections and uh, sometimes some newspaper articles and reports. So let's say if I click on the book here, okay? And then you see here, we have to fill up the information, the title of the book, the authors of the book. You see, first we have to put the last name of the author, then comma, then the first name. So this is something you have to remember. Then we can put the abstract, series name, and so on. But here you see there are lots of seg segments, right? But we don't need to put all the information here. And we can check in Shilda Composite, one of the websites that I have presented in another video, but I can briefly show it again here. So the citation compass, it helps us to understand what kind of information we have to provide for each of the references, okay? So it is available in Norwegian and English. So here now we are on the English version. So let's say for a book, what kind of information we have to provide? If I choose the APS 7, and then if I look into the category of book, uh, let's say I'm talking about a book with one author, okay? So for in-text citation, these are the information, author, year, and page number. So page number normally only when we are copying the text directly from another play, from the book, okay? Copying a definition or some things like that directly. That's when we have to pay, put the page number. But if we're rephrasing the text, we only need to put this part, okay? And for the reference list, these are the informations we need. We need the name of the author, first the last name, then the other name initials, and the year and the title of the book, edition of the book and publisher. So here you see an example. And you see here it tells us for Zotero, these are the information we have to fill out, the title, author, edition, publisher, date. So these are the information about the book we have to fill up in here, okay? So not all of them, only this, these four or five things, five things, okay? But I'm not going to do it now. I will just skip it for now. But as long as you put the information here, you now know how to put a manual citation. But I'm now going to remove it, okay? So I removed this item from my collection because it was an empty one, right? Let's go back and see how we can now cite while we are writing, okay? So if I go back to this Word file here, I have this Word file. Uh, normally you will be working on a thesis template or something like that. Every university will have a template for a thesis or if you're writing a journal article, normally you have the structure of the journal article here with all the subheadings and subheadings, and then you're writing there, right? So I'm just trying to put some text here. So I wrote a couple of sentences, blending, blended learning is becoming popular medium of teaching in higher education institution. There are several approaches to blended learning. Now we want to say, what are some of the approaches, right? So let's say I want to say, according to, and the article that I have here, the blended learning in higher education, uh, which is written by Ali 
a la Mary, okay? So I want to cite this article here, according to that article, okay? So how do I do that? Here you see we have the Zotero, and here I have the add edit citations. If I click here, the first time I'm doing it, it will ask me which style I want. So let's say I select this one, APS7, I click OK. Now let's say I get this tool, this, this tab here. So here I can write blended and it already, so if you write anything, if you write anything about the article, the journal or the article title or the author name, it will already give you some suggestions. So from here, I can now pick this one. But now you see this, uh, this citation here, when we're writing citation in the middle of the text, like according to someone or some things like that, then normally we don't really do it like this. We should normally do it like this. 2014, so I got the name of the authors and then the year. So I did the editing manually, right? But now let's say those three approaches are A, B, and C. Now I want to cite this article again. I put my cursor here. I write this. I write, I click on the add and edit citation. Then I write blended. And then I have the citation again. Enter. I have the citation here and also here. The, the This one was also exactly like this one, the way it is now in parentheses, the whole thing, but I edited it manually. So if I click refresh, it gives me this option, like you have modified the citations in Jotaro generated it. Do you want to keep the modification or no? So let's say if I say no, then you see it goes back to this formatting, okay? The default format where we have the whole citation in the parentheses. But to do it properly, what we can go is we can go here, select this one, okay? Then we can say add or edit citation. So this tool comes up again. We can click here and then we can just select omit author and that's it. And also we should take copy this text and put it manually here. So now let's see what happens. If I refresh it, you see, if I refresh it, then this part I was copying manually and only the year is now under the Zotero citation. So that's how it should be when we are citing in the beginning of a sentence. But when we're putting the references in the end of the sentence, after having the information, then normally we just put it in the parentheses, right? But now let's say you have been writing all these things and you are done with your, your article and you want to generate the least of your references. So to do that, you simply click here, add and edit bibliography. You see, you have the list of your references. So now let's say I have added one more sentence and I want to cite more articles here. Um, let's say I want to cite uh, three articles here, okay? One, but don't only this one. So you see when I add this, it's already coming up in my reference list. So that's the cool thing about it. It is coming out automatically. If I want to mo add more citations here, so I select this one and then I click on add citations, then I write a little bit more which one I want to take, okay? So let's say if I want to also cite this one and enter. So you see, we have two references here. You can have multiple references like this and it is already updated here in the list. So this is how actually it saves us a lot of time when we are writing scientific work citing them so it helps us to cite properly and also saving a lot of time and particularly when we're submitting a journal in the journal uh, particularly when we're submitting an article to journals you know a lot of the times we need to update the referencing style so let's say for example in this case if i need to update it to a different format i can just go to document preferences and i can say that okay now i want triple e and click ok and you see all the formatting is changed. Triple E prefers a numbering format and numbering format is here. So it saves a lot of time. If we are to do this changing manually, every time we submit to a new journals because papers get rejected a lot of the time and we need to submit to different types of journals under different publishers, it will take us a lot of time. So using Zotero can save us a huge amount of time in terms of formatting issues.
One last thing I would like to mention is that, you know, Zotero also helps you to remove duplicate items, okay? For example, here, when I click duplicate items, you see it tells me that I have this ar article two times, okay? So in my whole library, I have this article in two times. Most probably I have it in two different sections. So I have in under, I have this one in under the alternative will, which I see here, but maybe I also have it here, right? Under the method section, okay, this one. So I want to keep it like this. I want to have it relevant. I want to have it in different segments where it is relevant, but still it is telling me that it is duplicate. Sometimes if you want to remove the duplicates, you can just click here and then it says that merge the two items. You can click merge and then it will keep only one of them. And here you can choose the version that you want to keep, okay? So this is how if you're having a lot of references and if you're having a lot of duplicates, it can be easily removed, okay? So this is also another great benefits of using Zotero. So thank you for listening to me. I hope you find this useful. I highly recommend that you use Zotero in your scientific writing.